This funny thing that you're seeing right now is neither an animal nor a lemon peel animated by magic. It's a robot. Let's discover what it is and how it works. This robot was created by researchers at Northwestern University and the results were published in a recent paper. It's basically an aquatic soft robot. An aquatic robot that is a robot that works inside a water filled tank. And a soft robot in the sense that it belongs to soft robotics, which is a very interesting and growing field. Soft robotics is about robots that are built with flexible materials and are inspired by living organisms, like for example the octopus. Let's talk about the characteristics of this robot. So its size is very small, we're talking about a robot that is around a dime in size, so around one centimeter, and it's made basically of two components. One soft exterior that is composed by a yellow hydrogel, that is a colloidal gel composed by 90% of water, and this yellow hydrogel mechanically, from a mechanical point of view, it behaves similarly to organic soft tissues. And the second component is a nickel skeleton specifically nanowires made in nickel. So this robot can walk, it can pick up objects and it can also carry them around by either walking or rolling. Here for example it picks up an object, specifically a small hydrogel bead. Of the four appendages that compose this robot, two are meant for walking and two are meant for stabilizing. During the various design iterations for this robot, they assessed several possible solutions. We see solutions with no appendages, with short appendages, and finally, the best solution in terms of stabilization with four long appendages. Long in the sense that are of equal length compared to the two appendages meant for walking. And this robot, in addition to walking and rolling, it can also break dance to release sticky objects, as we're seeing right now. <laughs> This robot from Northwestern University is an improvement over the previous one, which was also made by the same university and the same researchers, which was way slower in its actuation. In fact, the movement was performed over scales of minutes. But now this robot can make up to one step per second, which is around one millimeter per second in terms of speed, which is very limited for human pace, but for a robot this size is quite surprising. And especially it's surprising because this robot needs no complex hydraulics or complex electronics. It has no motors. This is one possible iteration of design that we've seen, but in the future maybe different shapes for different purposes will be considered. Maybe more legs or different types of movement. So how does this robot work? It works according to two different principles. So first of all, the hydrogel is synthesized to respond to LED light. Molecular photoswitches are incorporated in the gel and these molecules will react according to certain wavelength of this LED light. So when the molecules and the robot is hit by light with a specific wavelength, it becomes hydrophobic. That is, it expels water and it contracts up to 84% of original volume. Then the robot legs, they stiffen, the robot stands up from flat position as we're seeing right now in the video, and then in dark conditions, so without light, the hydrogel absorbs back again water and it expands, recovering the flat position. And it's very nice to see, once again, light being used to power very small robots. I've made a previous video about nanorobots, this, this one is not a nanorobot, but there were nanorobots being powered by light. And if you are interested, you can also check that video out. And the second principle that is adopted is based on the nickel. So the nickel nanowires that compose basically the skeleton of this robot, they are ferromagnetic and they align to a rotating magnetic field that is projected from the outside of this water-filled tank. So nanowires, they change shape when they are subjected to this magnetic field and a torque is generated on the robot as a consequence. So the combination of these two physical principles, so light and a magnetic field, causes the robot to move. In this schematic, for example, we can see on the left, the hydrogel is deformed when exposed to light and then on the right, with a deformed leg, torques are applied due to nickel exposure to a magnetic field, that is the magnetic field B. In this other schematic, we can see on the left, arrows that indicate the magnetic field direction, and according to the change of the direction of this magnetic field, the robot moves in different ways. And the composition of these movements, of course, causes the robot to roll around or walk or do whatever it wants to do.
In this video, in, instead, we are seeing how, according to, again, changing the direction of the magnetic field, we can also steer the robot. Here we see, in fact, a 90 degree turn performed in increments of 30 degrees. Here again, we see how the robot motion can be varied according either to the frequency of the magnetic field and to the intensity. In this case, frequency is varying from 0.3 to 0.5 to 0.7 Hz and different varying intensities of the magnetic field. And this rotating magnetic field, in fact, can be programmed by the researchers so that the robot follows predetermined paths. In this video, a robot can follow a predetermined path and it's pretty amazing to see all of this happening without any internal motors. So it seems all very nice, but what is the exact purpose of this robot? Is it just fair to entertain us with its rolling and walking and break dancing? Well, it's not just that. There are possible purposes that have been envisioned by the researchers. One purpose, for example, is to transport chemicals, so, uh, for example, to catalyze chemical reactions. Another purpose would be to assist in medical therapies, which is much more interesting and much more important as a purpose. For example, one purpose could be, one application could be to transport pharmaceuticals, to transport medicines, so in terms of molecules, from one point to another. Let's consider the fact that this robot is at the moment just a prototype and its scale could be actually reduced. It could actually be smaller and transporting smaller molecules, smaller cargo, let's say. Another medical application that has been imagined is to suture wounds. Now, exactly, I don't know how these robots can be used, but it's something that the researchers have proposed as a potential future use. Medical applications are possible because the magnetic field that I use to move this robot are in fact capable of penetrating soft tissues, organic tissues, without any damage. Why damage? Well, you're wondering because maybe you're thinking that being exposed to a magnetic field is not very safe, but in fact the intent intensities of these magnetic fields are not very high. We're talking about, as you saw in the video, we're talking about tens of millitesla, which is several, a few orders of magnitude less than what used, for example, in MRI machine. So it's pretty safe from this point of view. And another potential use would be to employ several of these robots in a swarm, let's say, so several of these small robots that can work together and accomplish bigger tasks. Soft robots like these ones are truly fascinating, I would say creatures, and uh, I really hope to see more about them in the future, also more about this one in particular, because they're truly amazing, the fact that they replicate the, the functions and the capabilities of, of living beings is, is wonderful. Let me know in the comments your opinion about this robot. Also, let me know if you have any other topics regarding robotics or artificial intelligence that you would like to explore with me. I thank you very much for watching. My name is Paolo and we see you next time.